The Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia Deluxe Edition has in-game images for all things Zelda. It covers all the games up until Triforce Heroes, meaning it does not have anything from Breath of the Wild. Overall, it's a good video game art book. This review will cover the quality of the physical book itself, the content of the book, the aesthetics, and the nostalgia evoked by the book. I'll also look at whether it provides any insight into the development of the games. Let's start with the quality of the physical book. It's 9 inches by 12 inches. It has 327 pages. The covers and pages feel stronger and more sturdy than the average video game art book. Even though a lot of the original images are blurry and most of the images in the book are really small, on the whole I think the quality of the printing is pretty good. Alright, what's inside this thing? I'm actually going to start this section with how things are organized. I like that there are little tabs on the pages to help you easily navigate from one section to another, between historical records, database, and archives. They also have little subcategories as well. There are a lot of nice little touches with the organization. I mean, the timeline is insane, but they still have a little chart with helpful info all throughout the book, and I thought that really helped organize things. However, a lot of their attempts to organize things kind of have the opposite effect for me. And some diagrams are probably more for fun than they are interesting or informative. <laughs> because honestly, what's the point of this diagram? And there are some diagrams that are so perplexing that I simply do not know how to make any sense out of them. Again, I think it's because they're trying to tie everything together, even though the games weren't originally designed that way. As for image variety, pretty much all the images are in-game screenshots. There is some rare development art, and there's also a section that shows one or two rough sketches from each game, so that's almost nothing. There are a few neat little graphs and diagrams, like this one that shows the lengths of the different hook shots, but even though there's a little bit of variety, almost everything in the book is in-game screenshots. Still says Geldo's topography? Is there any writing from the artists or developers? Uh, not really. One part of the archive sections quotes and references the developers, but that's about as close as we get to comments from them. There is an interview with Aonuma at the end, though, and that's pretty good. Uh, if a little basic. If you've never thought about game design before, then you'll likely find it pretty interesting. So what's the quality of the writing? Well, it really depends on how much you want to nerd out on Zelda stuff, I suppose. I, and major Zelda creators, are of the opinion that the storylines are more like afterthoughts, and I find it pretty tedious to go through all the stories in so much detail, since they're all so similar and were adapted to fit together after the fact. The language of the book is, by necessity, littered with qualifiers, to an extent that some of it almost gives me a headache to read. I mean, look at this, for example. In eras when the seven sages awake to fight evil... There are also eras when, within the Seven, there are six sages associated with particular symbols, and Zelda is the seventh sage and their leader. It's like, I understand what it's saying, but man, that is awkward to read. And a lot of the book is like this. Again, if you're insanely into Zelda storylines, then you'll probably love it, but it's a bit too much for me. Sometimes it gets aggravating that the book refuses to break the fourth wall. It's like the authors are acting like we don't know that it's all pretend, and it's a bit weird to me. It's like when you go to one of those theme restaurants or a theme park, and the employees aren't allowed to break character for any reason. It's just kind of weird and awkward. Though again, I suppose some fans might love this aspect of the book. Like the Hyrule Historia, it falls into the trap of over-explaining things, to the point of absurdity. I mean, here it notes that some maps of Hyrule are larger than the other ones, and says that this is because the ground itself has expanded. I mean, it's just such a ludicrous thing to canonize with an official explanation. Just leave the topic alone. You don't need to reconcile that the maps are different sizes. Also like the Hyrule Historia, some of the captions are basically pointless. I mean, look at this one. The colors for the four links were decided based on a proposal from the Capcom development team. Okay, so in other words, the people who made the game chose what colors to make Link? Obviously. Why even write that? It took me a while to realize this, but a lot of the writing is just boring. I don't feel qualified to judge and say it's bad writing, but I was definitely bored through a lot of the book, and that's not good. 
On a similar note, I noticed I felt somewhat exhausted reading through the book. I'm not sure why, but there is a lot of writing that doesn't really say anything meaningful. And honestly, I felt kind of nauseous a lot while I was reading through the book. Now, I don't know where else to put this in the video, but I just had to include it. I've never played Triforce Heroes, but pause the video for a second and read that story summary. <laughs> that might be the dumbest story for any video game I've ever even heard of. All right, does it have what you want it to have? Well, what would you want to see in a book called The Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia? Well, I guess just a giant reference book of all things Zelda, right? Well, that's pretty much what it is. The amount of content in this book is impressive. It's just absolutely loaded with all things Zelda. Though I will point out that Nintendo is still pretending that the CDI games never existed. I mean, they're not even in the spin-off game section. As far as some other things I would have liked to see in this book, whenever there's images from both, say, Ocarina of Time and the updated 3DS Ocarina of Time, they use a screenshot from the newer game. And I personally would have preferred it if they used stuff from the older game, or if they just used stuff from both. Now, I'm both pleased and annoyed with the design documents from the old games. The stuff from the old games is simply amazing to see. I, I love it. I'm annoyed, though, because it proves there's a lot of stuff Nintendo has from the old games, but they keep parsing out scraps in different books, like this one in the Hyrule Historia. It's annoying that they don't just put all of the material into one book, but instead try to get you to buy a lot of different books printed over many years. It's not consumer-friendly. I think it's pretty obvious that fans would love to see a collection of design documents from the early games. One last thing for this section... Uh, I still think it was dumb for them to ever release a timeline. Uh, like here it says the timeline is now different from in the Hyrule Historia, and it can change based on the player's imagination. Well, that's a nice idea, and it seems they openly acknowledge that the timeline doesn't even matter. I find the chronology section a bit annoying because it's trying to make all these stories fit together and it feels awkward and weird, and it even occasionally cheapens the experience. For example, apparently, the official version now is that Ganon isn't evil. He's just influenced by Demise, who's just some random villain from Skyward Sword. As far as the book's overall content is concerned, I have some major issues. But at the end of the day, the book does a good job at being a Zelda encyclopedia. Okay, on to the aesthetic, starting with whether or not the book has a pleasant layout. I like that the pages aren't just white behind the pictures, but rather there's a softer color and subtle little patterns. It makes the experience of looking through the book easier on the eyes and more pleasant. Sometimes there are clumps of images and they're labeled with numbers, and the explanations are below. I think this is similar to the Order 1886 book, and it's a great way to keep an organized aesthetic and provide easily located captions. It just makes the viewing experience more pleasant when you aren't searching for captions half the time. Are there any full pages of art? Uh, no. Okay, well, what about the quality of the art? Well, as with the other Zelda books, the art isn't really front and center, but rather most of the art's screenshots. It'd be nice to see full page Zelda images. Perhaps a publisher like Cook and Becker could put something together that just really celebrates the imagery. That'd be nice. But again, at the end of the day, though, it does faithfully display the art and the game assets from the Zelda titles, which is what you'd probably expect from a Zelda encyclopedia. Alright, is there anything else noteworthy about the aesthetics of the book? Like the cover? Yeah, it's a pretty average looking art book. On to the next section. Record Scratch! This might be the most amazing looking video game art book I've ever seen. Look at it! The textured gold, the debossed ridges, the little arrow, the warning label on the back, the fact that the bottom of the pages are gilded in black so it looks like a real Nintendo cart, and the whole thing fits in this sleeve. It really does look exactly like the original game. It even comes with this awesome and genuinely funny instruction manual that mimics the writing and style of the original manual. It also mocks the official timeline not once, but twice. Okay. Are there any weird aesthetic issues? 
The book is completely packed with images, but the images in print are very small. It cuts into the experience of browsing when you have to get so close to the book just to see what's on the page. There's a lot of content that would really benefit from being larger, like these promotional posters. Look at these ones from the Fallout 4 art book for comparison. And also, some of the explanations and diagrams are so bananas that it just cuts into the experience a bit. I mean, these relationship charts are something no one asks for, and they're more likely to give you a headache than be interesting or useful. Well, there's a lot of aesthetic issues with the book, but the amazing outer appearance balances things out overall. Okay, on to the nostalgia factor. Particularly with the database section, I don't know how the book couldn't evoke nostalgia if you've played even a few of the games. It has every single item, every dungeon, every monster, from every Zelda game, and it's sure to provide at least some amount of nostalgia. However, I think if you haven't played even some of the games, which will be the case for most people, there's going to be a lot of stuff that doesn't evoke any nostalgia at all. I will say, though, that during the course of reading this book, it made me really want to play Majora's Mask, so I went out and bought it and played it. It's hard to say the book didn't evoke some nostalgia when it caused me to spend money and play through one of the games. So yeah, I'd say this book does a good job at evoking nostalgia. All right. Does the book give additional insights into the art assets and art design? Uh, no. Well, how about an increased appreciation for the game development process? I thought this was a really interesting insight. The main map in the first Zelda game consists of a 16x8 grid of screens. The dungeons in the first Zelda game all have different shapes, but they also fit onto a 16x8 grid. This was done to accommodate for the limited amount of data storage available on the NES cards. The first six dungeons fit together on one of those grids, and the last three are also on a 16x8 grid. So when you go into one dungeon, you're kind of going into all of them, but you're only able to explore the small section of the map that's defined as that dungeon. They use the extra holes in the map for the basement rooms where the items are. I just find it fascinating how developers are able to overcome the technological restraints they had. Link's Awakening, the Game Boy game, also had major technical limitations. It was interesting to see how they had to do things like plan out how each letter would appear in the text boxes, since they had specific space constraints. Okay, closing remarks. Even though I consider this book to be pretty good, I don't know that I'll buy another Zelda book. Zelda is great because of the gameplay, and that just hasn't been captured in book form. What we're left with are the stories, and I find it too draining to read them all for a fourth time. And it wears me out of the series. <sighs> Wake me up when they release a book with everything from Ocarina of Time. Well, different people want different things in video game art books, but I hope this review has been helpful in showing you what you can expect from this book. If you have any complaints about this video, please contact my customer support center.